welcome everybody joining us live on Facebook. Amen. So say this out loud. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. And I do what it tells me to do. And I love my Bible. So I make this as a confession. And I will meditate therein. Both day and night. On a chapter in the morning. And a chapter in the evening. And because I do, my life is blessed. No more a mess. Now everything I touch, come on, everything I touch, now turns to success. If you believe that shout hallelujah. Put your hands together for everybody joining us at Facebook. Amen. Thank you all for being with us today. Let's go before the Lord in prayer. In Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. But this is another opportunity to receive a word from you. We know that not one word from you is void of power. So we say, speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. Pray that my preach and teaching will not be with the enticing words of man's wisdom, but even as you have already demonstrate yourself by the spirit and the power that our faith not rest in the wisdom of a man, but in the power of God. Open to the operation of the gifts of the Spirit that you desire to flow and function that way in our midst. And as always, we covenant to give you and you only the glory, the honor, and the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you. You may be seated. So glad that you could be with us today. I'm going to continue on a series that I started just two weeks ago called Like Jonah. And in this series of teaching, the challenge is to look inside of you, into your heart, and to find out if there's any area in you that's like Jonah. If you uh, know anything about the, the story of the prophet Jonah, God came to him and asked him to do something in a certain place. He went in the opposite direction, away from what God had instructed him. And in doing so, he in, he encountered a storm of life. And oftentimes in life, the tough times that we go through are because we're not where we're supposed to be or doing what we are supposed to be doing. And are we then like Jonah, running from God, running from responsibility, running from the call of God, or running from commitment? So our text today is in the third chapter of Jonah. Now, uh, if you don't have it already, we have an app that will allow you to get all of the chapters that we read during the week, Monday through Friday, one chapter in the morning, chapter in the evening. Over the past couple of weeks, we saw Jonah chapter 1 end up in the belly of a great fish. <clears throat> At the end of that chapter, we went into chapter 2. The Bible says that he prayed in that place where he was, that bad condition that he was in. And at the end of that prayer, God spoke to that fish and commanded it to spit him out. Amen. That situation that you're in, that's bigger than you, doesn't have the authority to keep you. And at the word of God, it will obey and release you to your destiny. Amen. Of course, Jonah had to first humble himself and pray and go to God. Amen? Well, we pick up in chapter 3 and verse 1. It says this. Now the word of the Lord came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, preach to it the message that I tell you. So Jonah rose and went to Nineveh, according to the word of the Lord. Now Nineveh was an exceeding great city, a three-day journey in extent, kind of like Houston. Take you at least two hours to go from Cyprus all the way over there. Clear, 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 amen. Clear all the way on the other side of town. How about that? Well, notice that God came right back to him. Didn't change almost a word that he said. What he said in chapter one, he picked up and said the same thing. All right, Jonah, go to the city of Nineveh and do this. Tell them the message that I give to you. He called him a second time. I want to ask you today, are you running from the call of God? Are you running from God's call? I always 
as I could get an illustration that kind of helps set in mind what we're talking about. God called him a second time. I wonder how many times we've missed God's call in our lives. Phones today have the ability to, you know, tell you who called. You can even have a visual voice message. You ever been there where, you know, like at an inopportune time, you know, somebody's trying to reach you? And, you know, you, you can't take it at the moment. You don't even, I don't even know why people do that. Call me during church. I'm like, where are they? What are they doing? <laughs> then I have to remember, I have to apologize because when you come to church, you're supposed to put your phone on mute. And then I'm oh, like, it usually takes one good person for me to end up to remember as the pastor to put the phone on me. They can tell you how many calls you've missed. What if, what if that missed call is from God? How many calls from God that we missed or you have? The Bible says, Jesus said in Matthew chapter 20, verse 16, He said, <clears throat> So the last will be first, and the first will be last, for many are called. Church. Thank you for bringing your teens to church and allowing them to be ministered to at their level. Their life destiny is being set in their heart at this moment. Amen. One thing you and I should know and embrace is that many are called, Jesus said, and few are chosen. So the Bible talks about, Jesus talked about being called, but what is the call of God. I don't know what that means for you. When I hear it, it means something, and somebody else, you might think of something. Maybe if you grew up in church, you heard, or maybe you're new, and you, you're not a church person, but you're here today. We're going to talk about being called by God. What is the call of God? Or, in other words, you know, what does it mean to be called by God? Well, I'm, I'm called by God. Well, what does that mean? I want to be able to Look at this simply because it's my assignment today to show you and to help you understand that God is calling you. And to make sure that you are in a better position to answer the call instead of running from it. Amen? You know, the best illustration to answer the question, what is the call of God or what does it mean when God is called, is our phones. I think it's a perfect picture, especially since caller ID. I mean, back in the day, um, I do. I am old enough, just barely old enough to remember the phone that had the rotary dial. <laughs> you all remember that? And then they had the, you know, the more push button kind. But it wasn't no caller ID. I mean, you can pick up and you can be somebody you want to talk to. You can pick up and be somebody you don't want to talk to. <laughs> Then you all remember the answering service, right? You had five messages. <laughs> and you see the little light, you push that, and you can hear the message. You know, and, and again, the, the message came to Jonah from God, just like it would be recorded for us. And now we've got this, to this place where we can see instantly who's called. What if when you look down at your phone when it rains, that it's actually God that's calling. This is indeed the best, the simplest, best illustration that I can give to help you understand what we are talking about. It's literally God trying to reach you, reaching out to you, wanting to talk to you about something. We can talk about what he wants to talk about, but the simplest understanding is, is, is God calling you. Jesus, again, this is a different time. And in both cases, occasions, he's talking about certain illustrations to teach us a lesson. In 22 and verse 14 of Matthew, he says, For many are called, but few are chosen. I'm here to announce that there's not one person hearing me or listening to me that's not called by God. Every single person here. Called of God. And I want to 
want to show you that simply through the word this morning. You know, I asked a question, and well, many, doesn't say all, are called, but then not only that, he says that few are chosen. I mean, this plagued me from the time I was a youth. Why is it that so many are called, but only a few are chosen? And that answer came quickly to me in life. Because if you know anything about the nature of God, he doesn't reject you because of what you do. There's nothing that you can do to make God love you any more than he already loves you. And there's nothing that you can do or I can do to make God love us any less than he already does. What am I talking about? He loves us with an everlasting love because he's an everlasting God. He said, the Bible says that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. When we were doing wrong, didn't want to have anything to do with him, he still loved us. And even since then, if we were to do good, doing good doesn't make him love you more, and then doing bad doesn't make him love you anything less. He just loves you. Oh, here we go again. Why are only a few chosen? You ever get that call and they come again and then you think, well, maybe this is important? Yeah, <laughs> yeah some of us, you know, we'll see who's calling. We won't answer it on the first one. <laughs> come on now, help me now. But then, and, you know, in, in a normal service, sometimes it can be a number that we don't even recognize. And I know there's some people, and you can do this for me, but I'm still not going to pick it up. If I don't want to pick it up, I'm not going to pick it up, no matter how many times you call. <laughs> but some of us say, oh, well, this might be important. And just like with Jonah, God called and called again. And in your life, it's the same as you're about to see in the scripture. Why are only a few chosen? Because few actually All, bar none, are called by God. But only a few are chosen. Why only a few chosen? Because only a few pick up the phone. This entire series is about you answering the call of God on your life. In order for you to answer the call of God, you have got to know that you are called. That God is actually trying to reach you about something. Galatians chapter 1, um, Paul, in his experience with God, came to this revelation and realization. When it pleased God, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me through his grace. Paul acknowledged to the people in, in the region of Galatia that I am separated from my mother's womb by God. What you're going to see is that you've been called by God. From your mother's womb. Some of you have sensed on your life the calling of God, God trying to reach you since the time that you were a child. Later on, not today, we're going to look at the story of a young man, just a boy, who heard God call. So it is with you and I. He's been calling you, trying to reach you. Wanting to talk to you about something since you were a child. Matter of fact, Jeremiah said it this way. Before I formed you, this is God speaking to Jeremiah. Jeremiah was a prophet, one of his sons, one of his children, just like you and me. Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. That means before you were in the womb, he knew you. That means before your mama met your daddy, he knew you. And before you were born, I sanctified you. That word sanctify means to set apart. I separated you. He said, I was separated from my mother's womb. He had the same revelation that Jeremiah received from God. I've been separated, what? For a specific purpose. Before you were born, I sanctified you and ordained you a prophet to the nations. Later on in Paul's life, from the time he grew up, call of God was there even when he was persecuting the church. Responsible, held the coat of one that murdered Stephen. But at one day, he stopped running from the call. Like I'm beckoning to you, pleading with you. Don't run from the call. Answer the call. One day he stopped running from that call and answered the word. And the time came and 
Acts chapter 13, he was in the church just like he was, just like you are. In Acts chapter 13, verse 2, as they ministered to the Lord and fasted. And when you're singing songs and exalting God and calling upon him, that is actually it's music to his ears, literally. <laughs> as they were ministering to the Lord, the Holy Spirit said, listen to what the Holy Ghost said, I want you to now separate to me Barnabas and Saul for the work which I have. Notice that it's in the past tense. He wasn't calling them by the Holy Spirit that day. No man, no woman of God, even under the Spirit of God, can call you into something that God hasn't already called you to. He made it clear and abundant that before you were born, he was calling on you. Trying to reach you for something. And you don't have to do it. The, here we go again. All of us. Notice, he said, I have called them. This is past tense. It's nothing new. Amen? So, the next one is in Acts chapter 16. He acknowledges he's seeking direction from God. And notice here in Acts chapter 16, verse 10, he says, now after he had seen the vision, immediately he sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. It's past tense. He, there is God's calling on your life. He is called, he's inviting. That's what I was trying to remember. When I got distracted by that phone call. <laughs> Did you know what I'm doing? Somebody's trying to keep calling me. I want you to imagine. I keep ignoring that call. Sending it to voicemail because I don't have time for that right now. Are we doing God like this? Oh, man, who am I talking to? Are we putting him on hold? Are we knowing that we're called but won't answer? <coughs> so it is in our lives. The definition in its purest form of call, calling in the scripture is invitation. God's calling is literally an invitation. And there are several uh, stories that Jesus told to encompass this invitation. And you'll see it a little later as we go forward. But I want you to notice that he's inviting you to do something. You don't have to do it. It's an invitation. For example, in a couple months, we're going to be celebrating 10 years as a church. And you are cordially invited. Somebody say invited. Matter of fact, we're sending out invitations to the members to invite you to come and to celebrate with us this banquet. We're going to have a good time. We're going to have a worship. We're going to have a wonderful uh, time. You don't have to come. Why? Because it's an invitation. You can refuse it and you can reject it. And we're not going to love you any less. We're not going to love you anymore. Of course not. <laughs> we already love you with this everlasting love and it's the same. God Everything he gave you, he gave you freely. Amen. See, the Bible talks about that there are gifts and callings combined. Everything he gives you, he doesn't give it to you with strings attached. That I'll give you these good things. I'll give you salvation. I'll give you healing. I'll give you deliverance. I'll give you preservation. I'll give you prosperity if you'll do this for me. No. He freely gives and expecting or hoping nothing in return. That's his gifts, but here's his calling. After he gives you this gift, he'll reach out to you. And if you answer him, he'll invite you to do something for him and with him. Because of our different reasons, we reject that call. And we never find out what he really wants. We know that we're called. We know that it's God. We never, we, maybe we haven't learned how to answer the call from God. I mean, how do you do it? I mean, with Android, you got to swipe up. I can see you all don't have Android. All right. <laughs> I got both. Okay. We 
the husband gets the wife right. You want to reject it or <laughs> send a message or whatever. How do you answer that? So, now here's my point. God's calling you. If you don't leave in a moment, we're going to leave just in a few minutes. If you don't leave with anything else, I want you to leave knowing that he's trying to reach you. He's calling you. Listen to this. And so you'll know that it's not just Paul, it's not just me, it's not just those that's called to the ministry. The Bible says Paul, writing to the church in uh, the Romans, he says Paul, the bond servant, the servant of Jesus Christ, called an apostle. He knew that he was called, separated to the gospel of God. Verse 6 says, among whom you also are the called of Jesus Christ. Say it out loud, that means me. The Bible says you are also the same way Paul was called by God, you are called by God. He's trying to reach you. Verse 7 says, I'm writing to all, everybody say all. all. That means everybody leaves out nobody who are in Rome, beloved of God. Anybody here loved by God? I'm loved by God. You're loved by God. Notice, when you're loved by God, he's also going to call you. Here we go again. Come on, somebody. <laughs> called to be saints. We're what? We're called. We're called by God. I said, no, not now. Grace be to you and peace from the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. How about this? One of our favorite scriptures in Romans 8 and 28, the Bible says that we know that all things work together for good to those who love God, to those who are what? The called according to his purpose. Understand those situations that you are dealing with in life right now yeah. are going to work together for your good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Those tough times, those bad situations, those things that the enemy has brought up against you, God has already predestined, prearranged ahead of time for things to turn out in your favor. And it doesn't matter what it looks like right now. It doesn't matter what it feels like right now. It doesn't matter what the doctor says, the banker says, or the lawyer says. What God is declaring in your life shall be in Jesus' name. But notice how this thing works. All things don't work together for everybody. That's not what that scripture says. It says it works together for the good of those who meet certain qualifications. Number one, do you love God? Amen. Number two, are you called by God according to his purpose? You are. And you got to know that. And knowing that will help you know that this financial thing is going to turn out the way that I need it to be. Amen? Why? Because I'm loved by God, yeah. but also God invited me to do something. Yeah. Verse 29 says, for whom he formed him. He knew you before, you know, you were in the womb. For whom he formed him, he also predestined you to be conformed to the image of his life. <coughs> God's got a destiny for your life. Predestined. He planned ahead of time, made paths so that you could take to live a good life, yeah. good life, yeah. good life. Yeah. Amen. He predestined you that you might be, that Jesus might be the firstborn among many brothers. We are brothers with Jesus. Notice then, verse 30, moreover, whom he predestined, which we are predestined, these he also dialed them. Come on, reached out to them. Instagram, Insta Google them. <laughs> Gotta watch what you snap face. And Insta Google. Messages them. These he also justifies. Is that right? Oh, yeah, that's right. That buys me at least 10 minutes. I can't let you go right now. <laughs> Why would I let you go out into the rain? Gotta get done. That's, that's irresponsible. The <laughs> no, Lord, thank you. Now, this is awesome. I got at least five more minutes. Okay? Just bear with me. Say it out loud. I am called. By God. By God. Now you may not know what he wants, but it's first important to recognize the number. Because one of the main reasons people don't answer the call is because they don't recognize the number. Amen. You ever been there? You get a call, especially from out of town, right? Like, <laughs> Yesterday from Latvia. <laughs> Twice. 
And them, and them calls from Utah, I already know that's a telemarketer. <laughs> I could not pick it up once, you know, I got a hold of that. I said, well, I'm just not answering that call. But, but sometimes, you know, there's, there's, there's God's calling you and you don't recognize that it's calling. Another reason why, we'll get into this, not this week, but another reason why people don't answer the call is because of ignorant assumptions. And I'm not being offensive with that. And you're going to see it in Jonah's life. It was an ignorant assumption. Let me tell you a story about that real quick. There was this guy, man, I mean, from the time that he was a teenager, every time he gets to church, man, the spirit of God was moving, people would prophesy, and he just felt like he knew God was calling him, but he ran from it. I mean, you know that God was moving, 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 and, and everybody could see God's hand on his life, but he ran hard. He lived wild. He ended up doing a lot, but then he get back somewhere or another to the church and started, and there that call is again, and he knew it, knew it, knew it, and the whole time, one of the reasons why he kept running is because he thought God was calling him to go to Africa to be a missionary, and he didn't want to go to Africa. <laughs> when he finally said, yes, Lord, I'll do whatever you want, God told him, I don't want you to go to Africa. <laughs> All this time, he ignorantly assumed that God wanted something. Let me wrap this up. Can we wrap this up? Yeah. All right, so let's wrap this up. 1 Corinthians 1 1, just a couple more. Paul called to be an apostle, called an apostle of Jesus Christ through the will of God and Sosthenes, his brother. Several times in the first chapter of 1 Corinthians 1, Paul talks about him being called. He's writing to people who are called. Say it out loud I'm called by God. Verse 2 says, I'm writing, Paul says, I'm writing to the church of God, which is at Corinth, to those who are sanctified in Jesus Christ, you are sanctified, and called. You are sanctified and called with all who in every place call on the name of Jesus Christ. You call with all. Every person that calls upon Jesus is called by God. Amen. In chapter, verse, chapter 1, verse 9, God is faithful, by whom you were what? Come on. Call into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ. Verse 26 says, for, 26 says, for you see him calling, brethren, not many wise, according to the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. That's kind of vague when you look at it in a different translation. He says, remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God, what? Called you. Say it out loud. I am called by God. I am called by God. 1 Corinthians 7, 17. Another chapter where it's like several times. I actually had to cut scriptures out of this message in order to do it in certain times. But God has distributed to each one as the Lord has called. When God distributes, that means God is giving somebody something. When God gives you something, it's a gift. So not only in this verse do you have gifts given by God, you also have a calling. Hold on to that. That's important. So as God is distributed to everyone, there's nobody left out. I don't care where you come from or what you have been up to. There is a call God's placed upon your life for a purpose. Not only that, you were born with gifts, talents, and abilities and certain graces that God gave you that are connected to the call that's on your life. I'm sorry, I'm not mad at you. I know I'm just kind of preaching a lot. As the Lord has called each one. So let him walk, and as are ordained in the church. In the same chapter, he says, let each one remain in that calling in which he was called. Oftentimes, we struggle financially because we're not doing what we've been given by God to do. And the moment you tap into that, I mean, my brother, my brother's here as a testimony. I was in Detroit last week, and so I saw a lot of families, a lot of people ask about my family, and I, I could tell them, man, my brothers are doing great. All of us are in the church, we're working, and you know, God's blessed. I mean, he's, he's an entrepreneur, but started a business, and his life from before to after is an amazing story. Amen. What happened? He tapped into his call, at least yeah. part of it. Amen? Yeah. Amen. And so it is with you. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, 
Verse 1 says, I therefore, prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called. Hmm. Is it constant? Absolutely. Verse 4, there is one body, one spirit, just as you were what? Called in one hope of your calling. First Thessalonians, he says, I urge you, I beg you that you walk worthy of God who called you into his kingdom. And then lastly, he, he who has saved us called us with a holy not only are you saved, that's the gift. Amen. By grace have you been saved. That's the gift. And that not of yourselves, it is of faith, lest any man should boast. But not only does he save you or give you gifts, he has also called you. And notice that it's not according to your own works. You can play something softly for me. It's not according to your own works. The Bible says in Romans 11 and 29, I pray that you'll never forget this, that the gifts and the calling of God on your life are irrevocable. That means it's without repentance. Gifts, what he's given to you, it's unmerited. It's an undeserved favor. It's irrevocable. He didn't give you something to take it back. I said he doesn't give you something to take it back. Oh, well, you don't deserve that. Let me take it back. No, he gives, he gives it to you, and it's unmerited. In the same way, the calling on your life. It's not according to your works. You could have lived a wretched, nasty life before you got saved. And in your mind, you might think that you're not worthy of the call. There's some of you, God's been talking to you about doing certain things. And in your mind, you're not ready. And so you put him on hold. My question to you is, how long are you going to leave him on hold? That's disrespectful. You put God on hold? Oh, 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 oh this is God. <laughs> yeah, can you hold on for a minute? You got God on hold. See, what's supposed to happen is that he calls and you Hello? Hey. I believe the first thing that God will say is that he loves you. And then as you listen, your heart's open to the Lord. You might ask, you know, is there anything that you need, God? How can I help you? And sometimes we answer the phone, hey, how, you know, how can I help you today? If you would ask God, God would say, well, you know, since you asked, I want to invite you to do something. There's a young girl I've been trying to reach since the time that she was born. She's been through a lot of hard things. She's been running from me. But I know that if you serve in the youth ministry, that I could send her. And because of what's on your life, I know she'll receive you and receive the healing that I've prepared for her. And I'm going to use her to reach Tens of thousands. You know, somebody witnessed to Billy Graham. Come on. These great men and women of God, somebody was used by God, invited. Amen. In the same way. How long are you going to keep the Lord on hold? It's not according to works. There's been many examples of a man or a woman who did dastardly things even after they were saved. But it's irrevocable. So I understand this. So, you know, we get a license from the state of Texas to drive. And you can have your license revoked, right? If you go out there and drive recklessly, live, you know, they will actually say, you know what? I know I gave you this license to drive, but you no longer have this license. You have no longer authority to drive. They can revoke your license. But you know, it's not so with God. He doesn't look at your life and say, you know, that time you messed up, that was the last time. So, you know, I know I called you to do this, but you can't do it because you failed me miserably so many times. He knew before you, you were born all of the failures and mess ups in your life, and he still called you. He still is inviting you to help him do something. Here's the point. He doesn't stop calling. God's called you, and he doesn't stop calling. 
May back off for a minute and give me the space which is requested. Because he's not a cowboy, he's a shepherd. Right. And I'm going to force you to do it. And if ever you get back into that place of being warm in your heart toward the Lord, then you'll find his name upon your phone. Trying to reach him once again. Well, the sun came out. Just in the nick of time. But know that it doesn't change this life. Will you stand up on your feet?